Hey, greetings. Hello, Falava. This is Leotawa, Dr. John Peterson, and you are watching the Alofa Movement podcast. It has been a long time since I have been on YouTube Live, haven't done a podcast uh, or a YouTube video upload, and geez, I can't even remember. It's been a long, long time. So looking forward to getting back here. Um, I'm originally from Samoa. Uh, educator for 20 plus years, uh, live here in the Twin Cities. Um, the last time I was on, I think I was talking about the book I wrote in 2018, as well as some of the music that goes along with the book. Uh, the EP is called Heart of the Matter. You can find that on uh, Amazon Music and Apple Music and <clears throat> different platforms, Spotify and whatnot. Just look under Leatawa, L-E-I-A-T-A-U-A. You can find the, the music there, the book, you can find on different booksellers, Amazon, of course. Uh, the book title is Uncovering Indigenous Models of Leadership, and it's an ethnographic case study of leaders from my clan, the Talavo clan in Samoa. So much respect to all the family and Ianga out in Samoa, the South Pacific, but also here in the mainland, too. i uh, got a lot of beautiful family and just so grateful and thankful and blessed so today I'm here to talk a little bit about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I haven't really been into this for a long, long time, uh, but recently I got back into sports cards. Now I've kind of nominally been involved with cards, oh, maybe the last 10 years or so. I'd go to about two, three shows a year and uh, buy a couple cards here and there. But more recently, I've been getting uh, more deeply involved Um I own a small business called TE2 Education and Engineering Consulting. And uh, just in this last year, I had a friend of mine, Damon Clare, much respect to Damon, a buddy of mine from River Falls who had gotten in in the last year and a half into e-commerce. So Damon and I had been talking and I was going to maybe get into e-commerce with him, uh, went through Fund and Grow and have been participating in their program to get business credit, but also... Um, got approved by Amazon to be an Amazon pro seller. And so the idea was initially to work with Damon. Um, we decided it was maybe not the right fit and right time, at least not now, um, but still wanted to get involved in e-commerce. So I thought a little bit about it and figured I'd start to get into e-commerce through the sports cards, trading cards window or, or portal. So yeah, for the, for the last couple of months have been, uh, purchasing some cards here and there, uh, went to an auction house and bought a couple lots of 1986 McDonald's uh, play and win all-star cards. They're football cards from 1986. So I got a bunch of those. Um, we can do a do an episode um, on those two. Um, but anyway, yeah, just thinking of Selling some of these cards on eBay. I'm trying to get approved on Amazon Pro Seller. It's a little bit more complicated on Amazon than it is on eBay. But uh, yeah, just doing a little business thing here. Flipping some cards, of course. Actually flipping, hoping to flip quite a few cards. But um, also looking to just build my personal collection, otherwise known as PC. And uh, have some fun while I do this. Uh, it's been a, a long time since I've worked with sports cards and have been able to connect with some old friends. Big shout out to Eli McCausland and Mike Wheeland out there. Just want to say it's been a lot of fun connecting with you guys. Um, yeah, and so we'll see where this goes. There's a lot of good people out in the card industry. Um, I think since 2017, things have really started to heat up. We're in a bit of a lull right now. Uh, things have kind of declined from the last winter period um, where I think got real hot at the beginning of this year. Uh, if you look at the prices, auction, pr auction price realized on PSA, Pro Sports Authenticators website, you can see that things really did peak out in February, March of this year. And then since about the spring and the summer, things have been kind of trailing off. But overall, the trend line is up. And uh, like Eli says, this is turning into its own asset class, uh, sports cards are. Well, trading cards of all kinds. Um, you can go onto different YouTube channels, websites, and you can see that some of these cards are selling for Thousands, tens of thousands, and in some case, millions of dollars, which is wild to me, uh, coming from the 80s and the 90s where we just collected these for fun. So, But anyway, thanks for checking in. If you haven't done so already, please smash the subscribe button or the like button. Uh, definitely want to get some more subscribers. 
I, I do plan to make this show uh, available for young kids because I think that a big part of the card industry is geared toward uh, helping young people achieve their hopes and dreams. And so I'll be uh, refraining from any cussing, uh, any uh, innuendo that would be inappropriate and uh, won't be doing any drinking of alcoholic beverages. Although I may have one later afterward tonight because we're getting into the winter holidays. So with all that said, I will um, get started here with the uh, actual core aspects of the program. Um, this is my office back here. Um, you can see I have a lot of different books. Got my guitar over there. Got my uh, zip up hoodie of American Samoa. Um, if you see up here, got some pictures and stuff up there. Homer, Aristotle. Uh, got my LGBTQ flag representing um, one love for all of our brothers and sisters. And then, of course, I got my George Floyd social uprising uh, painting that I got for my uh, Christmas last year from my wife, Michael, and the kids. I really love that print. It's from uh, the spot where George Floyd Square currently sits at. So anyway, so let me see what I got here. So the first thing that I wanted to do a reveal on is this package here. I think I have an idea of what's in it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I wasn't expecting to get this until, oh, end of the month because of all the holiday rush with all the gifts and packages and stuff. But I saw this and I'm kind of checking it out. And I'm curious, you know, for anyone who might be watching, that oh, looks like no one's watching. So there you go. What you think this might be. All right, so if you want to take a guess, post in the comments and let me know if you think you know what this is. I ordered this about two weeks ago. Get the scissors out here. And I was pretty excited to get this. I think it's kind of an essential, essential part of um, working with sports cards, trading cards. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so I was a little confused, a little confused at first. The outside of this says, love you. Which, I'm a love guy. I mean, I get it. This is called the Alofa Movement, and Alofa in Samoan stands for love. So, I mean, this is the love movement. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Um, of course, T2 is associated with this. and My uh, Amazon store, Pro Sellers account, store name is called The Edge Effect. Or no, I'm sorry, The Edge Market. Excuse me. Uh, on Amazon, you can find me under The Edge Market. But uh, then I read through the back of the slip here, and it, this is a magnifier. You can see it came in a package here like this. All right. Bought this on Amazon. It wasn't overly expensive. I don't think it was more than 20 bucks. So it says here, dear valued customer, thank you for your great support. Here are tips for using magnifier batteries. Recommended use carbon for magnifying glass products. Don't use alkaline batteries. When using alkaline batteries, the bulb will heat up and it will burn the circuit and cause the light to not light up. Well, that's good to know for those of you that use these magnifiers. Use uh, carbon, not alkaline batteries, okay? And they just talk a little bit about whether or not the, the uh, product was, was a good product. So, so this stuff... I think oh, I'll throw this away. I'm going to keep this actually because I can reuse this as uh, bubble tape and packages that I send some of my other cards into. <clears throat> Let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, this is the magnifier. Ah, all right. So a microfiber cloth for cleaning it, but here is the magnifier. Now you might ask yourself, so what in the world is this for? This is for looking at the condition of cards, um, namely things that aren't, you know, so aesthetically obvious, like the corners. Have the corners been touched up? 
what kind of shape are the corners in? Um, is there any chipping on the edges that you can't see? Sometimes there are micro scratches in the newer cards or even in older cards, just micro scratches on the front of the card. Maybe there's a crease on the back of the card that you're not familiar with. So um, this will provide an opportunity to look at the cards in greater detail. And it looks like there's this unscrews. Let's see, I can get it up on the camera. This is where you put your batteries. So it looks like it takes two double A's, maybe three double A's. I'll have to figure out how many it takes. Two or three, maybe four. I guess we'll see. So yeah, so there's a light on this. And you just turn the light on and look through the magnifier. And it gives you a chance to look at your cards. Uh, it's, I'm no expert in grading. In fact, I haven't done any grading. <laughs> I screened some of my cards for sure. But it's important to screen your cards and, and really take a close look at them if you're going to send them in for grading. I think even if they're raw, you need to know what the quality and the um, perceived condition of the card is before you sell it at a show or sell it in your shop or even trade it with a friend. Um, I think it's just important to know what you've got. Um, and certainly if you're grading cards with the prices being what they are, especially with PSA, um, you definitely want to make sure that whatever you're sending in grades out at a at a at a at a price point that you can at least make your money back on sending it in to get it graded. Right now, PSA I think is doing grading for like a hundred dollars is their lowest end. Man, that's a lot of money. Hundred bucks? I don't know about you. I don't think I got that kind of money. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's good to grade your cards and screen them. I screen my cards in a couple different ways. When I dig for cards especially vintage, um, I usually do a three screen process or a three step screening process. So the first thing I do is I go through all the cards and I put the ones down that meet my criteria for the kind of aesthetic quality and condition I'm looking for. Usually my first uh, thing that I look at and look for is centering. Is the car relatively centered? Now, the further you go back, the harder it is to get centered cards. Um, I've had particularly a uh, tough time with getting like 1954 tops that are centered, um, 55, 56. It's a little better with 57 when they go with the, when they go with the smaller card size, but all those 50s and 60s cards can be hard to find centered. So I like a I like a centered card. Some people don't mind a centered card, they are off centered card. That's not really me. I like a centered card. It's kind of my first first cut. Uh, second piece is uh, the corners, of course, and the edges, and then also the surface. Like, is, does the surface look good? Is the image jacked up? Is there mold on the card? Yesterday, I was looking at some cards at a place here in the Twin Cities at a shop, and all their best cards in the 1956 tops had evidence of mold on them or formerly had mold on them. So some water damage, that sort of thing. So it's really important to screen your cards. And once you buy your cards and then you go through the cards you want to potentially have sent in for grading, it's good to have a couple sets of eyes on those cards. So I do employ the support of my wife, Michael, and uh, my daughter, Nora. And they do a great job kind of helping me to understand from another set of perspectives what the condition of the cards are. And is it worthy of sending into, like, say, PSA or CSG, Sports Certified uh, or Certified Sports Guarantee, or SGC, or HBA, or uh, Beckett, or whatever it might be. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the that's the uh, the magnifier, the light up magnifier part. Okay. So now to the big reveal. So I sent in my very first four cards about oh maybe the week first week in December, and I did go with CSG. Um, I had talked with my friend Eli, who's owned many shops over the years, and he had said, you know, I think CSG is a good long-term play. They're relatively new uh, to the market, but they've been around um, for a long time in terms of grading comic books and stamps and coins, and like they're like an industry leader in those areas. So he also mentioned that there were some leadership changes that were happening with CSG and Fanatics. And so... Um, I figured this would be a good play. I like the way their card holder looks. Um, I know some people have said that they don't care for some aspects of the, the flip, the top part of the card. 
Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my perspective on that. But um, anyway, without any further ado, I sent in four cards. All right. And then um, I'll open the box and then take a look at them and then talk a little bit about uh, the CSG process and how I found that to be as a, as a consumer. So this is the box they sent the cards in. Again, I sent in four. I did walkthrough, um, which, and I did the top tier of walkthrough. So it was a little spendier. It was about 105 to $110 per card. Part of that was because I decided to go with subgrades. I also decided to go with um, high resolution imaging um, for the uh, scans that they sent back to me. So I have seen the grades for these cards. Um, just wanted to let folks know that. But I did end up spending a little bit of money. I think for the four cards, it was probably $550, somewhere in there, um, which is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. $550, bucks, holy cow. But uh, for my first four cards ever graded, I figured, why not? Might as well go big, right? So I'm just going to open this up here. Oops. Sorry, I can't really see this very well. Let me tilt this down a little bit. This is the box here. Got my trusty scissors. And they really pack these in pretty solid, which is nice to see. Don't want to have your cards damaged while they get transported from one place to the next. All right. Let me put this back up. So this is first my first uh, YouTube video with this kind of thing with the cards. So you'll have to be patient as I work on developing a more robust method for recording. Just cutting this here. Okay, cutting this side here. Now I've seen a couple of CSG reveals for cards that have been created. And I have to say, I do like the way they package the slabs when they return them to you. I think they do a nice job. So inside of it is the, of course, the packing slip. All right, so you had to print that out and and send that back. That's actually an invoice that I'm going to save. Of course, for those of you that are business owners that are doing this for business, not just hobby, you have to save all your invoices for tax reasons. Some of the expenses might be deductible. This is the way the inside of the box looks. Okay. And then this out. We've got the four cards here. Pull this whole thing out. <clears throat> All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but the four cards are here in this little holder. All right. Now, CSG, uh, like I said, is they're kind of the new kids on the block, but I think as a long term play, there's a lot of reasons to like CSG. One, um, and a lot of this I've learned through my friend Eli is um, their holders are nice. Like their slabs actually, I think, are some of the nicest, if not the nicest that I've seen. So that's one piece. Uh, two, I think the clarity of their slabs are really clear. Uh, I don't like the frosted edges sometimes of some of the other holders. I think PSA has a frosted edge. I like the clear edge. Um which is nice. Um, what else do I like? Oh, the fact that they do subgrades. The subgrades to me provide provide a higher level of reliability, i.e. consistency, and validity, i.e. accuracy, to the grade of the card. Um, so there's no questions about why your card was graded the way it was. Now, of course, you can do CSG and not get them subgraded. I think it's an extra, what, eight, 10 bucks, something like that to get the subgrades. But if you're talking about cards that are worth you know, more than 50, 100 bucks, I think it's maybe worth to get the subgrades. So, um, 
So let's take out the first card. Looks like this is a 1981 Topps Magic Johnson. I don't know if you can see it, there's some glare there. All right. So looking at this card, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Got an 8.5 on this. Yeah, so 8.5, that's not too bad. This is Magic's second year, so it's not his rookie card, but it's his first card just by himself. It's not with anyone else. I think the rookie has got Larry Bird and somebody else on it. It's like the perforated uh, three-panel um, type of card. Um, but, yeah, no, great, great card. Uh, got this, geez, got this a long time ago. I can't even remember when I picked this up, to be honest with you. Um, I think I might have gotten it at uh, the car, old card shop in Menominee, Wisconsin, Sluggers or something back in the mid-90s. Uh, looks like I got an 8.5, 8 on centering, which I can I can understand. I think it's about 45 on the top and 55 on the bottom. I think the sides are pretty close to 50-50. Uh, the corners got a 9, which is, I think, pretty solid. They are a tiny bit touched up. Very hard to see without a magnifying glass. Edges were 9.5, so that's excellent. The edges are in great shape. And then the surface was 8.5. So overall, a score of 8.5. Now, you might ask yourself, well, if I add those numbers up, 8, 9, 9.5, and 8.5, and take them and divide them by 4, that gives me an average that's different from 8.5. And that is the case. And I didn't know this until my friend Eli mentioned it, but and then I watched it online, but CSG only gives you 0.5 above the lowest score, the lowest subgrade. So in the case of this card, the lowest subgrade was centering, which was an 8. So the highest that I could do was an 8.5. So even if these were all 9.5s, if the centering was an 8, the best I could do is an 8.5. So they are pretty tough graders. I mean, it's they're not really faking at all. So I think part of the long-term play with CSG is the more accurate, the more uh, uh, consistent that they are with their grades, um, the better chances that the value of these cards are going to hold within the market um, over other competitors. And that's not to say that the other competitors don't do a good job. They probably do. It's just, I think, with these subgrades and um, – with the way that they just are tough on grading, I think these are going to be uh, a nice investment over the next five to seven years. Yeah, so that's the magic. There's the back. Pretty straightforward. What was magic doing? So magic's second year, he averaged 21.6 points a game. Uh, did pretty well with rebounds, free throws. I think he got hurt that second year, if I'm not mistaken. So that's one thing, one thing to consider. Because I think the Celtics won at 81, and then the Lakers had won at the prior year. Pretty good weight, like not light. It feels feels good in my hand. So, so that's the first one. 81 Magic. Second one we have. Looks like this is a 97-98 Kobe Flair Showcase. Uh, yeah, 9798 Flair Showcase, row two, card number 18, Kobe Bryant. Um, nice card. I love these Flair Showcase cards. I think they're some of the nicest basketball cards that have ever been made. Um, this got a 9.5 for centering, a 9 on corners, so far so good. Edges, 9. Surface, 7.5. All right, so... If it hadn't been for the 7.5 on the surface, which I'm guessing there are micro scratches on this card. What are you going to do about that? I mean, this card's 25 years. I bought this card in 1996. Um, yeah, 1996. That was a long time ago. That's like 20 some years ago, right? Um, yeah, 7.5 on the surface. So the best I got was an 8. So you could make the case that this is maybe even an 8.5 possibly even a 9 PSA. I mean, we're talking 9.5, 9, 9, and then a 7.5 for the surface. So, again, if you add the numbers up and divide them by 4, you're looking at a much better score. I mean, come on. But that's okay. I'm not, not, not upset about it. 
So my first Kobe card graded by CSG came back as an eight. <clears throat> I also like this, this aspect. The cards stack nicely. I don't know how that is for PSA. I've never had more than one PSA graded card, but they, they seem to fit together nicely. I like that aspect of it. All right, next card. Boom, another Kobe. All right, this is a 1996-97 Flair Showcase. This would have been a, his rookie season or his rookie card. Uh, row one, number 31. Uh, centering was a 9.5. It's pretty good. I would hope so, too. I mean, these cards were printed in 19... I thought they weren't printed in 1942, right? So they should be centered, you'd hope. Uh, the corners are 9. Again, that's good. Edges, 9.5. Surface, 8. What? Surface is 8? What are they talking about? Oh, wait a minute. There's some micro scratches. If you look really closely on this card, you can see that there's a couple little very imperceptible micro scratches on the basketball so you can't see it I, mean, I don't think there's no way you could see this because of the glare but it's there trust me i knew it was there before i even sent it in i was hoping to get a nine on this or i was hoping to get a nine on this i knew i wasn't going to get two nines on these two cards but i was hoping one would return a nine but um that's the way the cookie crumbles, right? Can't be upset with CSG. They've got their own standards to maintain. So overall, a beautiful card, an 8.5, Kobe Bryant, 96-97 Flair Showcase. Um, in the early part of this year, this was reselling for, or reselling for, I don't know, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. No, of course, since then it's dropped off. If you've looked at the, the uh, APR, on PSA, but uh, still a very nice card, and I think the value will continue to go up um, over the next few months and years. All right, last card. We're at about 30 minutes here, so i got to wrap this up. So the last card is one of my favorites, right? 1964, Roberto Clemente. All right, now it says Bob Clemente. He hated that, by the way. His name is Roberto, or his name was Roberto. Uh, Puerto Rican-born, uh, San Juan. Uh, came up in the uh, playing bas or playing foot basketball football. What sport did Roberto Clemente play? He played baseball. All right, so baseball. Uh, but grew up in, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, used to play against major leaguers like Monty Irvin and uh, Joe Black and others uh, when they would come down south in the winter time to play baseball. Um, absolutely, one of my all-time favorite uh, sports figures ever. And he's my favorite baseball player of all time, definitely. Um, I like what he stood for, the fact that he was a five-tool, five-out-of-five-star player. I mean, a guy could run, he could hit, he could throw, he could catch. Uh, he could do it all. He could field. So um, this is a 64. I picked this up, believe it or not, at a shop a few weeks back. And I'll give credit to the shop. Ultimate Collectibles in Hopkins, Minnesota. Mad respect for Shane and his crew. Jesse and Kelly and everyone up there. So I've appreciated those guys over the last month that I've been getting to know them. Picked this up there and, uh, yeah, sent it in to get it graded. So let's see what I got. Um, centering 8.5, which is nice. Um, corners are an 8. So if you look closely at this, you can see the corners have a little touch to them. Not bad, but a little bit. Edges are 8.5, surface is an 8, overall near mint, mint 8. So I was pretty happy with an 8. An 8 from CSG for a card that's what, how many years old? Over 50 years old? I think that's pretty good. What will this retail at? What will I sell this at? Don't know. Not sure if I even want to sell it. Might keep it for my own personal collection, PC it, and, and uh, pass it on to the next generation or something like that. We'll see. I've got a couple of Clemente's, but this one's probably in one of the nicer conditions of any Clemente's that I have. This is the back, kind of the classic 64 backing. It's orange and white, kind of a creamsicle color. Yeah, I really like these 64s, nice cards. So yeah, I thought I did pretty well on that. <clears throat> so just to review, uh, got the 
8.5 on the 81 Magic. Eight on the 97.98 Flare Showcase Kobe. Roll two. 8.5. It's hoping for a nine. Got an 8.5. Other than those micro scratches, this could have been a nine. Even a 9.5, actually. And if a nine, if it's a 9.5, it's gem mint. So, and that brings the value of this card up a lot. <laughs> and if you haven't looked at those, check them out. I actually bought an 8.0. CSG Colby the other night for like about a hundred bucks. I thought that was a pretty good deal just as a, as a resale for somebody who might be interested in that car, but doesn't have tons of money to spend. And then finally the eight on the Roberto Clemente. All right. That's a 64 tops Roberto. Don't be fooled. He never called himself Bob. Not that I knew of. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, curious as to what your thoughts are. Uh, you know, haven't been on my YouTube channel for like two, two and a half years now. So it's going to take a little while to build up the, the viewers and the likes and the subscribers and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this and uh, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty excited about CSG. Also plan to send some stuff into PSA, which I can talk a little bit about um, maybe in another episode. I definitely want to do an episode or two on these McDonald's uh, football cards that I picked up. Uh, about two weeks ago, um, there's a lot of them, <laughs> and they need some of them need to be graded. A lot of them actually need to be graded. So I need to flip a few to get my money back, but also hopefully hang on to a few and um, watch them. Hopefully appreciate and speculate a little bit on the increased value down the road. So, all right, well that's it. Appreciate you watching. Again, hit the like button, subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And I uh, hope you all have a great and blessed Christmas, holidays, Hanukkah, um, uh, Kwanzaa, whatever it is you celebrate. I hope that it is Three Kings. Today, today is speaking of Three Kings, Puerto Rico, um, Boricua, one love to Puerto Rico, and uh, all of our brothers and sisters and they out there in the world. Peace out, one love. <clears throat> Sorry.